right, we're just going to take a handful of those. Maintaining a garden can be hard work. Now, try doing it underwater. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. It may not look like it at first glance. We plant them actually in a pattern. But this is an underwater lawn in the making. The roots, the rhizomes, and then the grass. With sea grasses. That's a good one. We're not trying to fix everything with this. We're trying to find out what works. That's yeah. why we're here. The 156 mile Indian River Lagoon along Florida's east coast is normally home to acres upon acres of sea grasses, but much of them have died, creating a bigger problem for the creatures that rely on them. This has been a um, um, massive mortality of manatees. It's very clear that it's due to uh, starvation. Their principal food of manatees is seagrass. Last year, more than a thousand manatees died along Florida's waters, a record-breaking number. They're starving because runoff pollution from farms, fertilizers from people's yards, among other things, eventually end up in the water, which create more intense algae blooms, blocking sunlight from reaching seagrasses and killing them off. Unfortunately, everything has kind of come to a head the last two years, but it's, it's, been, a, it's been something that's been in the making for a long time. In the short term, manatee rescue programs are trying to feed the creatures lettuce to help them survive, but it's not a long-term solution. That's where Florida Atlantic University professor Dennis Hanasak comes in. You know, we're just a small piece of this overall project. Doing something they haven't shown off until now. So we try to get in and underneath it. It all begins here, in these tanks, where the seagrasses grow on the university's campus. To make it easier to put in the ground up there. Using coolers, they load them up and drive them to be transplanted into the water. There you go. With help from volunteers. This is hard work. Like registered nurse Susan Millett. And I've taken care of new moms and new babies and worked in a nursery. And the, the seagrass, I have found out, is the nursery for all aquatic life. So it just segues right into what I do, at, what I love professionally, and what we need to help do for our, the future. This is a dividing line between the lagoon, where the seagrass nursery is, and the open water, where the seagrasses were once plentiful. If it works, it could be applied in other places. Australia is doing seagrass restoration. The Chesapeake Bay area has already done a great job at oyster restoration, and we've learned from them. Nicholas Sanzone is Environmental Programs Coordinator with the City of Satellite Beach, which is partnering with the university on the program. So that as the clams and oysters are filtering out the water, that helps that water quality, which allows the seagrasses to have better visibility so that they can grow with more sunlight which they hope can eventually save the manatees. We live now, and as a species that has a 100-year lifespan, we act in our time frame and in our windows, and we want to make sure that it's healthy and happy while we live here. And restore a balance to the waters we all share. In Satellite Beach, Florida, I'm Maya Rodriguez.